Hello. In the next uh, five minutes, I would like to briefly discuss the important MR pulse sequences that we use in our neuroradiology brain studies. Um, the different pulse sequences have been developed that emphasize T1 and or T2 relaxation times. Let's first look at the T1 weighted images. So here we have on your left a T1 weighted image without any contrast administration. This uh, sequence is the most useful for analyzing anatomic detail. In this sequence, the CSF is low in signal, so you can see that the uh, ventricles have low signal. The white matter is brighter than the gray matter. Uh, and um, this is um, employed in conjunction with gadolinium contrast, as is seen here on your right side, uh, because enhancing lesions are bright on T1. So here we have a lesion that is enhancing so that you see how the, that it is taking up the contrast material. And then all, all of this low signal area here is edema, and edema looks uh, low on T1-weighted images. This sequence has a short TR and a short TE value. Next, we will look at the T2-weighted uh, image. Uh, this image is very sensitive to the presence of increased water and can visualize edema to great advantage. Uh, the CSF on a T2-weighted image appears bright, so you can see that all of the cisternal spaces, the subarachnoid spaces are bright, the ventricular system is bright, edema is going to be bright. The white matter in this sequence is lower in signal than the gray matter. Uh, this is very good for pathology, and it has a long TR and a long TE. Next, let's look at the flare sequence. This is a fluid attenuation inversion recovery sequence, and this sequence has T2-weighted contrast while the CSF is attenuated and has low signal. So you can see here that the ventricular system has low signal, the sulci should have low signal, and the cisternal spaces and subarachnoid spaces all have low signal. However, you can see that it has T2-weighted information with all of this edema showing up as very high signal on the flare images. This sequence provides a better contrast range with more conspicuous delineation of pathology. So it is very good for looking at the pathology and especially good for looking at lesions in the periventricular region. Next are the diffusion weighted images. Um, the diffusion weighted image, image assesses the local environment of the cell to determine the ease of water diffusion. As cells swell, such as in cytotoxic edema, which is seen with infarctions, the ability of the water protons to diffuse in the extracellular space is restricted. This restriction of diffusibility corresponds to increased signal on T1-weighted images on the diffusion-weighted image and decreased signal on the ADC image. Um, in this particular patient, um, there is a, a, this uh, patient has a tumor in his left frontal lobe. There is an area of a restricted diffusion uh, with high DWI on the, uh, on the DWI image, which is correspondingly low on the apparent diffusion coefficient. Now, uh, this sequence is mostly used in stroke patients because it is very sensitive for detecting acute infarction. So it is the most sensitive sequence to detect acute infarcts um, as early as 30 minutes into the infarction. But other things restrict. For example, here we have a tumor that's highly cellular, and that can restrict. And also bacterial abscesses can also have restricted diffusion. Uh, next sequence is the diffusion tensor imaging. Um, in this sequence, we are mapping the white matter fibers, and the white matter fibers are going to have different color encoding depending upon if they are going uh, in an AP direction or if they're going from right to left or if they're going up and down. Um, there's some organization in the white matter movement, and water protons cannot diffuse equally in all directions. Because they cannot diffuse equally in all directions, this gives you what we call Called diffusion anisotropy. So the diffusion tensor imaging uh, maps uh, uh, shows white matter tracks using this anisotropy. Next, I'd like to just mention uh, a word about gradient echo sequences. These are acquired with flip angles that are less than 90 degrees, something which we, you will learn in your physics classes. Uh, they're more susceptible to magnetic field in homogeneity. And paramagnetic substances such as blood products, iron, calcification, and manganese deposition are seen more readily with the gradient echo sequences. And therefore, the gradient echo sequence is used in cases of trauma or studies which are searching for blood products or calcification. 
calcification. But remember that CT is a study of choice for looking for calcification. What I am showing here, however, is the SWI sequence. It's a susceptibility weighted image. This sequence is even more sensitive to paramagnetic substances such as blood products and calcifications. For example, here we're seeing the calcifications in the choroid plexus. And uh, here you're seeing some calcification in the, in the dural surfaces, a dural plaque. So this is, again, very good for uh, blood products and calcifications. And this uh, sequence has mostly replaced uh, uh, the gradient echo sequences in our institution. I would like to just conclude by saying that we do all of these sequences in um, the uh, patients uh, that we are doing MR images of their, of their brain. Uh, there are particular sequences that are more important than others in particular cases. For example, in the stroke patients, the flare sequence and the diffusion weighted imaging are the most important. Um, because the diffusion weighted imaging, as I had said before, can uh, uh, detect an infarct as early as 30 minutes into an infarction. Uh, if you have a tumor case or if you have a case of infection, then in that case, you would like to look at the flare imaging. You would like to look at the T1 weighted image and the uh, without and with contrast to see the enhancement of the lesion. And if you're uh, uh, concerned about bacterial abscess, you would also like to look at the diffusion-weighted imaging because the bacterial abscess is restricted in the center. Thank you very much.